join us for a special review of the BMW X5M competition in this case. And we will also tell you more about the BMW X6M and talk about the competition package, what's in it and what's not. And also here the beautiful landscape around the Phoenix, Arizona area. You can already see something of that in the background. So nice landscape, interesting car, everything of that with Thomas here on Autogefühl in exterior, interior and the sporty driving experience. As you know, in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front we can see here with the BMW X5 M or the M competition. Competition adds some more features and some more horsepower, zoom more to that. Here the front grille, black, really wide, extremely large really with this vertical fin. Then the lower intakes are also bigger. Mineral white is the main color here for today. Headlamps have the interesting LED daytime running light. They also come with LED from the base technology, then optional the adaptive LED and then optional optional the laser light for an extensive high beam function. You can already see that with these blue accentuations. So a very impressive front but I think you know without exaggerating it still looks somewhat elegant but of course already pretty strong. 4 meters 93, 16 foot 2 or 195 inches is the length of the X5. 18 inch wheels would be standard for an X5. The M model comes with 21 inch wheels. Massive and wow what a great styling here. Looks really really fancy. Blue brake calipers as a contrast. Then we also have more M contrast here. The black one that is closed by the way. The side mirrors in a sporty aerodynamic way. This is also pretty cool. Tinted windows. The designer and main design raises up here. So the X5 overall a very beautiful SUV but rather classic styling. And I think here it also gives a good compromise between sporty and elegance on the visual part. And 22 inch wheels is an option for the rear. Then with 315 mil tires. Wow! <laughs> That's almost truck alike. Brings even more traction to the ground. Yeah, but of course reduces the comfort even a little bit more. And we have the wheel arches paint in vehicle color and technology wise it comes directly with the adaptive suspension in an M stiffer setup. Air suspension is not available for the M model which you could usually get also for the M50i for example. And the rear axle steering is not available too. So they said they wanted to keep it rather pure and also with these big wheels it wouldn't have worked that well so that's what the engineer said. 
That's a disadvantage, of course. The rear axle steering really makes the car more agile and is a very interesting driving experience. Also very good for parking in and out and so on. So that could be a disadvantage for this True M model. However, it comes with this rear sports differential and also the anti-tilt control, the anti-roll control that the car is always being kept upright. I really love to put these cars in front of so beautiful landscapes. Yeah. That's cool to watch, isn't it? <laughs> I hope so. Then in the rear, we can see the modern tail lamps right there. It's also a big difference to the previous generation. This looks way more modern, also in the three-dimensional design. And then the X5 is, let's say, rather simple in the rear layout, but of course, guarantees you more space on the inside if you compare it to the X6. Then the lower black contrast here, big diffuser, a huge X5M competition badge, and of course, the exhaust here, this is the main part, one, two, three, four, and the sound, you already heard a little bit of that. What's your take on the design? in general you get three liter six cylinders both diesel and petrol and they actually you know score quite well for the normal daily use starting with the m50i you get this 4.4 liter v8 the same as is here same base hardware but here some hardware parts are also different for the true m models and then of course a different tune so again 4.4 liter v8 600 horsepower or with the m competition 625 horsepower Acceleration figure is then 3.9 or 3.8 seconds to 1 km or 62 miles an hour. Yeah, that's of course pretty impressive. All-wheel drive as standard with a strong wheelway bias. And of course here you can deactivate more of the assistance systems and also the stability control all with these M modes to give even more purest punch. to the BMW X6M here also in the competition. In Germany, for example, the X6 is only available with the competition package. The X5 is also available without. And in US, you can pick with both. And the interesting thing is, so you pay, you know, about 110k in US or 130k euros in Germany for an X5M or X6M. And if you want the pa competition package, you pay another 10 to 14 grand for that. And what do you get on the exterior? First of all, you have this shadow line here, so black frames around the double kidney, otherwise it would be a little bit brighter here. The front lower part is just a little bit different. Then you have these side fake out air takes that are also in black. If you want the special mirror caps in carbon fiber, that's even an option, even with the competition package. Yeah, you know, so you pay a lot of extra just for this competition package. And then you get the sports exhaust in the rear that is also covered in all black. So overall on the exterior, if you have the competition package, it's even darker, brings more black to it. So overall looks a little bit more aggressive, both for X6M and X5M. And by the way, this very special color here is a BMW individual color. It's called Ametrine. Well, the basic dimensions, X5 and X6, they are of course the same. The big difference is this falling roof line that looks definitely sportier. In this new generation, the X6 also with the horizontal tail lamps, it looks a little bit sleeker, more elegant than before. And it's really a design decision because, you know, and of course practicability because the X5 has a little bit more trunk space than in the height. We'll soon also compare it interior-wise, first the X5 again, and then we we'll also take a look at the interior of the X6. So, exterior-wise, which one would you actually go for? Do you think in the M version, the X6 makes more sense, or is it the other way around? Looking forward to your feedback. And how could it be different in driving? We'll soon find out more. But already now the information to you, whereas in the normal versions the BMW X6 has a little stiffer suspension setup, the BMW X6M and the BMW X5M share the same suspension settings. 
Notable differences are that the chassis form of the X6 offers a little more torsional stiffness. The A pillar is flatter and the very same seat that is used in the BMW X6 is positioned 10 mm lower inside the vehicle. Will we notice a difference in the handling due to these facts? Let's find out very soon. This is the car key and here with some M colors at the side and you close it here when putting your finger on the top part and then you open it again when you put your hand on the inside, door closing sound. Yeah, that sounds quite solid but I've heard it better before. Then inside of the doors right here with a tight wrapping, cool Hofmeister King design, inside everything galvanized, good build quality, really stepped up there from the previous generation, optional Bausend Wilkin sound system. Then you have reasonable door pockets on the inside. Here um, you also have this quilted structure. And then X5M competition entry badge in the lower part with some special floor mats. We have the steering wheel which has the sporty form and the M colors as well. You already see the special M buttons, soon more details about that. And then the seats, they come standard for the X5M with the, or the X6M the same. It's an, you know, with this integrated head restraint style, I would say, you can put them down, then they look totally integrated, but you can also put them up electronically. It's right there, and they move up. That looks quite fancy with an integrated logo. This is also illuminated at night, for example, and again, a quilted structure. Um, you have some microfiber on the insides right here, but that's it. Everything else is animal skin. That's, of course, not sport. You slide on that, it gets hot in summer. You have a seat cooling available, but it's not needed. And so far, they have the philosophy when people have a lot of money, they do not care about animals. But that's not true, you know. So in future, they should definitely change that. So only option you have here. For a normal X5, you also have the more friendly, animal-friendly Sensatec material, for example. Now let's get inside, and it's of course fairly easy. You have the upright SUV seating position. These sport seats, they have a little more shoulder support, but they are very stiff, and the structures on the seat make it also even stiffer. Um, so the base sport seat you would get with the, for example, M50i, when you go a step down, is more comfortable. And that's the theme for this car, both suspension and seating wise, you get more performance, you get more sportiness on the cost of comfort. That's again, nothing you can say it's good or bad. You just have to decide if that's the right thing for you. I would always go for a little bit more comfort or like a good, better compromise of comfort and sportiness. But here with the M model, they really said, you know, less compromise, really in the sport direction in many, many ways. Well, of course, sport here would be a microfiber surface all over the seat and also for the steering wheel. But again, as for, you know, long-term comfort versus the sportiness and stiffness and everything, suspension and so on. Yeah, have to decide about that. Headroom here is still plentiful, 1 meter 86 or 6 foot 1, no problem. And we also have this panoramic roof. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you have a little more headroom then when you don't have it. But here, especially in the X5, it's no problem at all. In the X6, you know, it can get a little bit closer. Here, for example, the X5 also has this more upright A pillar. By the way, the inside is covered here with a microfiber. That's also very beautiful and quite cozy. Steering wheel, electronic control, like this, up and down, also in and out. That's definitely very good control. Interior overview, characterized here by this deco element in carbon fiber for the M model. The climate unit is still manual, so also good to control it while driving. I like it also with the manual volume knob. Then you have the sporty steering wheel with the M contrast stitching on the inside. Then you have the special M buttons, for example, for a 
extreme setting and a more extreme setting without uh, stability control, but you can also individualize it in the menu if you like. Left side cruise control, assistance systems, right side volume input. Oh, and heated steering wheel is also available for this one. You have two times 12.3 inch for the screens, all comes digital all the way, soon more details to that. The lower part, we have a three-dimensional batch right here for the X5M competition model in this case then also carbon fiber and when you slide it open you can put your smartphone there with inductive charging and CarPlay also works in a wireless way. USB-A device charger and cup holders adaptive and heated or cooled both available. And then lower middle console with a nice shifting lever there in the M style and it works like that that you don't like put it back or forth, that's for the manual shifting, like with the shifting pedal to the steering wheel. You put it to the right side for driving, left neutral and left front for reverse. A little bit like shifting a manual, quite funny. And then there's this classic control knob, turning and pressing or writing something on it. But of course you can also use a touch um, or voice input. And then you have some more M mode buttons, for example, you can change um, the view in the digital instruments there and you can activate or deactive yeah, in this case activate the exhaust note and last but not least you have the middle armrest like this slide open USB-C charger and some more space for all the clutter instruments they come to life when you start up the car and then you have a counterclockwise rpm right there and yeah sounds quite nice and then you can see that there's space in the middle then, for example, for the assistance systems, when you have the speed on the left and the RPMs on the right, that's, you know, exactly the reason why they do that. And other than that, you cannot adjust so many things. On the right side, then you can see how the sport gauges adjust, for example, when you are in the special M modes. Here again, when you go to this M mode, then how it changes, that's how it looks like then. So uh, yeah, that's more minimalistic and more performance oriented. And here we have the head-up display, which is standard for the X5M and the X6M. So you can see the speed, the loud speed, and also when you have the GPS turned on and set a destination, even some next intersections, it's really helpful. And you can also adjust the height, by the way. Here we have the rear view camera, and it's pretty cool. This happening line it follows you, also with a drone view from above here that you have the backup assistance so when you go front somewhere see oh it doesn't fit i want to go back this basement garage back here then you can let the car do that steering and uh, everything is being done automatically this is the gesture control so uh, yeah this is really funny and we can also hear something from this bowers and wilkins optional sound system so it's a very nice sound crystal clear and very crisp there's also the Apple CarPlay integration. It's wirelessly done, and this time it also worked the very first time, so no problem as for that. The integration is really cool, goes all the way over the screen. And other than that, you have this main menu. You can access the map right here, and it's a good visualization, and also the software, how it guides you, has always been right so far. Then you have the main menu here, but you can also access this with this turning knob and, for example, go to the driving information where we find that the absolute minimum consumption is about 12 liters or more kilometers. We went down in now for the last kilometer and that's about 20 mpg US, 23 mpg UK, but that's absolute minimum. You cannot score any better. Usually, when you drive a little bit performance like, <laughs> yeah, that's funny, um, then it goes up like sometimes 14, 15, even higher, or like way less than 20 mpg, more like 15 something. So, you have to be aware of, um, of these consumption figures. And this is the M menu where you can change all the different stuff like engine, chassis, steering, and the brakes, and also the X drive, the overdrive. drive. When you have DC off, then you have even more rear wheel bias, for example. Um, it is always a, already a rear wheel biased overdrive, of course. And then these, these things are also then changing depending on what you're doing um, with the buttons right there. And you can really fully individualize it. But you have to take your time a little bit for that. And always among my favorite features, the BMW wings as the lights in the top ceiling. Well, a good perspective here for the panoramic roof, especially cool for the rear passengers. You open this shade. I mean, it goes really all over the vehicle, it has also been increased here. 
if you compare it to the other generation and goes like I think every dimension is it's like the whole roof is covered by that and then when you open it it's look, looking like this and yeah the closer it comes for a big SUV convertible I would say so it leaves a lot of nice air in um, question is if you having like high, really high temperatures here in the summer in Arizona you might want to have a fixed roof still but at least you can close this shade again if you like now getting in the rear and you have another leg room that's no problem so you know considering it's such a long car there's not much leg room you know is okay also for four tall adults but that's for example where the Mercedes GLE is better as for leg room then again the seating comfort here in the rear I found better than in the GLE because here the bench is more upright and that's also difference X5 and X6 the X6 you sit lower and also lean more backward here you sit more upright as for the bench and headroom wise this is also still okay although again this panoramic roof is mounted right here then isofix at the outside parts you can flip the seats from here if you like already and in the middle part there's also an additional climate unit available for the rear seat and even with seat heating but again that's even an option right here so the overall price for this car as it stands now yeah about 160k Ui, ui, ui. 645 until 1860 liters boot capacity so let's see about that you have this foot kick opening mechanism that opens the top hatch split one here and then you open this second one right there and it's really cool for picnic purposes when you sit down here it's really a nice laser effect have to be aware of two things first of all when you put like you know beverages here and someone is standing up and then being really close with your leg next to the trunk it could theoretically happen that you push the button then with your leg but you know that's that was be one thing and second problem could be when you're sitting here like you know watching something then you know moving your legs like this a little bit and a little bit too far then you can get actually in the area here of this foot kick opening or closing mechanism and the thing is yeah then everything closes on you so have to be aware of that it's a really cool function with the split hatch but you know maybe all that then without the foot kick opening or closing mechanism and i think they should you know somehow a little bit better secure this lower button here also or maybe that you can put in a lock or something that you can even enjoy your picnic um, situations a little bit more in let's say more calmness overall good dimensions here this is the base setup then you can also flip the seats here on the left side and it's a very nice mechanism other than that we can also put some luggage inside that you can see like this or then even upright still fits under this cover which is manual and there's open left and right not a real rail because there's always this seven seater option for the x5 as well but i think for the x5 it doesn't make too much sense rather makes sense only for the x7 i think so and then i just have something still on the rear seat which i want to remove because then we can go for the full setup right there here we go and I mean considering it's a 625 horsepower car still very probable usable in the trunk and last but not least here in the lower part even here with hydraulic struts with some more space or then um, replacement tire could also be a solution. And now to the X6. M interior so the difference is the A pillar is flatter so you have a little bit less space there other than that we have a bright interior in this case but that you can also go for the X5 M I think bright of course a little bit more beautiful brings more light and also some of the material is a little bit softer somehow than the other seat we've shown to you the form is you know not really different but the surface somehow so this was a little bit more comfortable not sure what's the reason for that but in general x5 and x6m or also the non-m models they have the same seating form so they do not really differ in comfort and then it just depends like on the very seat you pick you know as for the you know the the whole trim and stuff again here because the a pillar is a little bit flatter it's um you know a little bit more cramped in the feeling but of course it's still big so it's more upright than here in the X5. So the X5 feels a little bit more roomish in the front, but still, you know, 
you still have enough headroom. There is also the panoramic roof built in here that is also available for the X6, so it doesn't make too much of a difference. The X5 more conveys a travel feeling, whereas the X6 more conveys a sporty feeling because everything is a little bit then more condensed here. But again, not too big of a difference in the front. Everything else you see here is basically the same. And what about the competition package? In the competition package for this 10 to 14k extra, you get these entry badges here, the special competition entry badges. That's a part of it. And then this three-dimensional logo in the middle console we've shown to you earlier. And also this very beautiful Alcantara headlining. That is also something that's part of the competition package. And yeah, even more animal skin in the interior. That is even more a, pack, a part of this competition package. By the way, you might ask yourself, so where are even more options like for 20k or something? For example, sound system or soft clothes. So that's another option you can add to the car or not. <laughs> then the rear, this is of course the biggest difference in X5 and X6. You see everything is a little bit more cramped in here. The legroom does not differ because it's of course the same wheelbase. But in order that you still have enough headroom, and that's actually quite okay. Again, one means a 6 or 6 foot 1. So the inside bolstering of the ceiling is a little bit slimmer in comparison to the X5 here. So you gain some headroom then again and you might also see my seating position the seat bench is lower and it's also falling backwards a little bit that again ensures the headroom and yeah it's a little bit less comfortable to sit on in the x5 you sit higher more upright have also more traveling feeling towards the front and so on so even especially better for kids still it's reasonably comfortable here again with this very reduced legroom overall considering it's such a big car will fit for tall adults no problem but the x5 overall a little bit more comfortable um, but then again yeah it really rather depends on styling design and so on because you can live with these compromises they've done here with the x6 well of course the trunk is a big difference not exactly the height below the cover that's the same but just you know when you put it up when you put this cover up folds like this then this height, when you want to trans transport really high things, or maybe you want to put a mountain bike in with the, you know, with the handlebars and the transverse way or something, then you're a little bit limited. But still, it's a good opening. You see here, left some luggage inside, so you can also live with this compromise for most luggage purposes. Yeah, maybe this flap is a little bit strange, but then again, um, the X5 had this wobbling um, cover there because there's the background of the seven seat option. So yeah. I mean, again, it's more about the styling. You can also have a good versatility here still in the X6. Some hate these SUV coupés, some love them. What about you? And last but not least for the trunk part today, what about the child safety test? Well done. We're starting with the Agile launch control with the X6M, we're switching vehicles back and forth today a little bit and thing is you have to go to a special sport mode here but then you also have to go, in this case it's already right there, in this third shifting super sports mode and then you also have to deactivate the ESC completely with holding the button. That's a little bit different than in the M performance models where it works with the ESC sport. Here in the true M models, it only works then with ESC completely off. So they made the difference right there. And again, um, only do that when you really experience closed circuit uh, and so on and so on. And, um, you know, just always safety first. But sometimes you might need to accelerate very fast. And maybe then it's helping with safety, isn't it? and that was already a little bit exceeded 0 to uh, 65 miles well almost 70 but 65 miles here the speed limit so I stick with 65 here and that ran really quick and earlier I did some um, X5 acceleration you also see it later on in the driving part um, without the launch control and the thing is even if you don't use the launch control you can like rev it up to like 4000 rpm or something so you 
even without the special launch control, you have a very great drive. But here with the launch control, of course, everything is optimized and there's a little bit better punch even. You also feel that Neo GeForce is, is a little bit more increased. Maybe we have to compare it in the GeForce meter. Of course, I didn't concentrate on that one, but uh, that will be a very interesting one. So that was the first start to our agile driving part today. So, what about some acceleration? Well, that was already at 80 miles. Quite impressive, man, right? <laughs> and you might wonder why are we allowed to do that? Actually, we have this one lane, you know, kind of surveyed by the police, so we have the you know, official confirmation to do that otherwise we would not be allowed to do that here so they thought you know the police the Germans are in town let's make that road all free so otherwise it would be 35 miles per hour again I would always obey the speed limit if not the police told us that we're allowed to do it here in this case because they watched the road for us and so we can also speed it up a little bit more and this is really wow I mean I'm already in this sport mode especially here and you heard from from sound and the steering is really crisp you see that very precise commands I can put on there of course I don't exceed too much of the speed because I also have to check out to the other lane wow what's I mean suspension wise that's so stiff in this case it you know it does me a favor because I can get an absolute great command of the whole vehicle to watch this hill wow the entire roll control works perfectly you see it's a heavy it's a big suv but you have no roll whatsoever look at how little i have to do with the steering and still have so good control and input of that hard on the brakes yeah it's also really cool with the altitude changes here so you can really test that very well what's going on and again i mean there's really no roll from this car whatsoever so the stiff M suspension together with the anti roll control it's really fantastic here of course you will lose some comfort in everyday driving life but you know since we have the sporty funny at the moment that's really impressive the all-wheel drive you've also seen that in the acceleration the all-wheel drive evens out everything very well so you know you you don't have this you know one axle concentrated acceleration is really distributed very well although normally there's a rear wheel bias so most of the stuff is sent to the rear wheels and then of course there's more to the front the more you hammer the throttle and that's also good for a better acceleration actually so there's the sheriff here in front of us controlling the road there's also another car in front of us so we have to adapt to the speed there not sure where what he's going to do maybe we'll overtake that one i don't know exactly <laughs> but it's actually cool to have like a police escort to be able to drive fast right that's something yeah i didn't have that yet so i mean why not you know so shout out to all the sheriffs and policemen out there thank you so much for your service and yeah why don't we drive around together right <laughs> so any police that wants to invite us to come over and uh, drive some nice fast and add rounds we're always here for you and the cool thing is really i mean we can do some slalom like stuff here i mean look at that again no rolling whatsoever very precise steering commands and um shifting through the most it's actually also a lot of fun you know you can be like this very calm you can even deactivate the exhaust node and then you're actually pretty calm overall and at the moment here for example i mean i can go to m1 or m2 then i have the different sport mode set here for example here just a little stiff as a problem suspension so it's even stiffer than it normally is stiff and a little bit more throttle input on the m2 is even more limited chassis stabilization so i can throw the car in the corners a little bit more you maybe also saw that when i'm 
you know, went a little bit to altitude and so on over the hill. Um, that got me a little bit more loose, so to say, but still perfect control over this car and even more throttle input. Steering is a little bit crisper, for example, also sport. I have a little bit more resistance in the steering then, for example. And overall, that's, you know, it's really a lot of fun. It doesn't feel at all, you know, uh, like, like driving an SUV or something. I can you know, also um, drop us behind. And then what you can also do, I mean, even if you're in a normal mode, you can um, always go to this uh, shifting difference here, the uh, shifting lever. This is normal then. And when I'm going a little bit further up, and even further, you maybe also hear that, then the car automatically goes in gear down and shifts differently. So keeps it rather in low gears, puts it to the higher RPMs and so on. And you know, this M dynamic mode with you know traction reduction and so on, you should only use it actually like closed circuits, racetrack, uh, and, and so on. And I mean it's as soon as you hammer the throttle here, everything is you know, is, is coming to life, you know. Um, however, it always depends also in which mode you are and also which gear you have put in. Um, so if you want it even more spontaneous, you can always use the shifting pedals, go back. We can also go to this M mode to see everything here in this M scheme. That's also a lot of fun, definitely. Third gear or go back to second. Now we're using shifting pedals. Wow. <laughs> That's really some tough tough stuff I, I can I can tell you guys. So and we can also, you know, let us drop behind again so we can hammer it once more. Here by the way, when you hold the shifting pedal, then it goes back to this automatic mode. Here we go. Let's see if I can have like another straight to accelerate where I can also see what's going on. So here for example, and I can just stop again and see. That's a 100 miles, wow. That's really, that's really ridiculous. And again, I would not do that, never ever on public roads uh, when the police wouldn't be in front of us. So really cool that we have the chance to do that here today. And I mean, it's so easy to get to speed with this vehicle. Everything feels so effortless indeed. And they really put a true sports car here on this high SUV platform. So also when I think about the Audi RS Q8, um, we had also like really, really good acceleration there. That was um, pretty amazing. Um, but I felt that they did have a better compromise of sportiness and comfort. Here really everything is shifted towards the sportiness. So the more sporty and um, you know, comfort compromise would definitely be the M50i. This one here really goes all the way in the sports direction. And here, look at that. I mean, we had 80 miles per hour and how stable the car is remaining, even at, the, at these high speeds. That's really, uh, really, um, really amazing. And again, usually we have everything set to kilometers per hour. Remember, we are looking at miles per hour at the moment, 80 miles per hour. Usually 50 would be the speed limit here, which is, I mean, somewhat also uh, suitable, definitely. Also, you're still good as for noise insulation, but I feel the model is louder than, uh, a little bit louder than the base models. Um, also when some stones are on the ground and so on. Um, but I'm not sure, maybe that, that's also just road surface alike. Cannot really um, prove that, that that would be like a, like a massive difference or something. But um, it's really astonishing um, that they could put even more agility into this car if you compare it to the previous generation. And I mean, already the M50i, uh, which we've, we've been driving in the X, X, X6, that was already pretty amazing. Oh, now the police is getting to some speed. I guess this sheriff is also having a lot of fun today. <laughs> yeah, I never would have imagined that I drive through uh, uh, through um, Arizona roads with double of the allowed um, current speed. So again, please do not repeat, do not do this. Um, again, unless you are officially allowed by the police. But <laughs> so Thomas, 
Thomas 007 with the license to speed now they yeah I like that <laughs> yeah that's really a lot of fun I, I really always need it also yeah when I when, when I'm doing reviews always need police escort now wow it's a really cool driving experience and um, I think GLE 53 or then soon 63 and this one here they come quite close I think so AMG and BMW M really decided on going the very very sporty way whereas Audi more tried to focus on the sportiness comfort combination and that's what AMG then rather does with the um, you know light AMG models or BMW M with the M performance models you know M performance are the light models there in, in this case by the way on the brakes this is also really good great spontaneous acceleration uh, deceleration and, and of course also acceleration again yeah and I mean that sound you can always turn it off but of course sound is one of the big differences here although you know that nowadays vehicles are so well insulated that sometimes you hardly hear the sound from the exterior so even in you know great performance vehicles there are sound actuators that actually help you understand the sound overall yeah but that's almost like a German Autobahn episode here and that's in the state of Arizona so you know we always have something new for you guys here hope you all enjoy also uh, you know our, our speedy part here for today really cool to be to be able to do that and I mean there's so many different modes and um, uh, adjustments you could actually do uh, you can spend hours and hours changing everything back and forth so just as you like it but again be careful you've maybe seen also already the M50i when you have some slippery road service because of the rear wheel bias the car can actually slide out still you know all wheel drive and rear wheel bias it can slide out in the rear not exactly here because it's dry tarmac and you know, there's really like a lot of grip especially from this uh, 350 millimeter tires so there has to happen a lot that they lose traction actually but you know when the road is wet that can happen quite easily overall so really sporty quite loud a rather extreme ride for an SUV definitely on the course of comfort both with seating suspension and wheel size definitely you feel a lot of what's going on on the road due to these massive big wheels it's always some kind of trade-off question is then what you want then let's also keep it a little bit calmer and public road and according to the regulations we go a little bit more to the motorway and look to assistance systems so what about some motorway driving because I mean most of the time that's probably what you will do in this high performance SUV and we're here at 65 miles per hour so that's like 110 kilometers now or something like that and in the motorway and the X5 and the X6, so both they have a great noise insulation in general, and that's also accounting here for the M models, so no change as for that. So it stays relatively calm inside here. And when you just do cruise control and motorway, of course, there's not, not much sound then from the exhaust, so you can still relax somewhat. I mean, yes, the base seats or even the normal sport seats are a little bit more comfortable than these here, you know told you earlier a little bit more support but they're not necessarily more comfortable you know people throwing out some garbage out of the window I really hate that so you know there's the, you know there are these these videos where like this uh, motorcycle guy he collects like um, like the cigarettes people uh, throw out and then knocks on the knocks on the window and then puts all of the garbage back to the car that's a great action <laughs> so these well deserved then yeah, back to the motorway driving here blind spot monitor in the side mirrors that's really cool and very helpful of course and always nice to look at this aerodynamic form of the side mirrors that's definitely very fancy the x5 also has a good view to the rear because of you know and to the side um, because of the upright building form and you have this great travel windscreen in the front that's really cool so yes even if you have the m model you can enjoy these comfort features of the car and of course also the rest of the assistance systems we have the cruise control can switch it from distance control to assist driving 
that's an optional package then. Assisted driving is then that I actively keep it in the lane from the car. So here, you see the car does that itself. Always keep your hands at the steering wheel. That's how it's meant to be at the moment, still at least. And it's a rather smooth process. So what they done here with BMW is that they integrated it in a way that it's not, let's say, obstructive. Here in the M model, you can also switch that all off, yes. But most of the time, you will still enjoy the assistant driving, fe driving features here too. Um, it's just a little bit more relaxed and of course the distance to the car in front of you is being kept and also this lane runoff protection is done with steering intervention not with brake intervention that's also keeping it rather smooth so actually still a quite enjoyable motorway ride here you might ask yourself what about suspension and what about the wheels as for the comfort well yes um, that's the thing mm. So, suspension-wise, with adaptive suspension, it's a great adaptive suspension, one where you usually do not miss the air suspension. However, it's a little bit stiffer set out here, but still everyday driving life suitable. Yes, a little bit stiffer than you might want to have it, maybe, um, for stuff like this, but still okay. But the real comfort loss rather comes with the wheels. So becomes, because it comes standard with 20 inch, one, 20 inch wheels, and also in this case here with the option 22 inch wheels on the rear, and just when you're running you know, over the, the wide lines or something, or you know, there are like those small humps here that signalize you're leaving or crossing the road just for safety, uh, you really feel them in a quite harsh way. So that's the diff difference then. So indeed, that would be better, I mean, 21 inch it is for this car, that's it, but probably I would not go for the 22 inch in the rear then, you know, when I'm going over, it's like, maybe you also pick that up on the camera, just um, noise-wise, and like, pop, 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 um, yeah. I mean, that would be more comfortable than with smaller wheels. Also, if you think about comparison to the M50i, um, that was a little bit more comfortable, although we also had the optional wheels mounted there, but I think overall, if you would have it with well, 20 inch or 19 inch, that would be way better. So, yeah, the bigger wheels, of course, because I mean, in the rear there are uh, 315 millimeter tires. That's like, <laughs> it's massive. So, that's of course better for the traction and of like for acceleration so on, but it's not really necessary, you know? So, yeah, always comes with the pro and the con but that's uh, why we are here. But overall still enjoyable, especially when the road is even, you can still have some decent um, motorway comfort. And again, I think it's also a good decision to put the assistance systems here in this performance car. That's the comparing driving part here with the X6. Just cancel that one here. And let's also go to some funnier gauges. Here again with the sport displays. So you have so many options to control this car. Once again, it can be really, oh, there's an X7. Really complicated. Also, while, like with this M mode, because this M mode here um, is more about the driving assistance systems. And then again, the shifting mode here on the shifting lever, shifting pedals, and the M modes which you can individualize and configure. So, yeah, you have to get used to that, <laughs> and also then like you know to find your best setting. Most of the time, of course, you will just do DSC on and um, you know, cruise in a very normal way. However, what about the difference now X6M and the X5M? Because now we are in the X6M. Well, overall, they are basically the same vehicles, yes, but you do feel some more sportiness with the X6. We also feel it in the base version, so you feel a little bit more connected to the car, so like slight changes. Mm, I do miss somehow the rear axle steering, which I had in the M50i, so that is somehow missing here, I think, because it makes a little bit more 
special driving experience. Um, but of course here the sound and acceleration is special and you can just shift down the gear and then you're just right there. You can always fine tune that how you want to have it. And again, I think there are some slight nuances, X5M, X6M, so if you are seeking for this more agile feeling and a little bit more sporty emotional approach, then you're actually right here with the X6 and if you like the visual part and with the X5 more travel suitable as for the rear hatch and so on, a little bit more space. However, the power is also there, definitely. So. I would say I also felt that when the when I was comparing the other version, the X6 is a little bit more fun and the X5 is a little bit cooler when you are traveling then and have just some, you know, some more flexibility, you know. So that's the basic difference. So cool again, especially with the, you know, very even road here now and also pretty scenic again for you. So when the road is very well done, then the suspension is superb, you know, then there's no problem with less comfort or something and it really feels perfect just again with suspension and the big wheels when the road is bumpy then you do have some comfort issues definitely with the true M versions here and even more so than with the competition because you have the 22 inch wheels in, in the rear but again I'm really having a lot of fun driving here in the X6 and I mean driving now at about 45 miles per hour um, which is allowed here this feels like so underwhelming and so slow for the car overall. This is really, um, yeah, really very astonishing. Eh? Also today I tested a little bit more on the motorway at higher speeds and the thing is there when you are in this assisted driving mode. If you want to change the lanes that works perfectly. First of all again the car is being kept in the lane and then again when you hit the turning indicator just like this here then the lane change is being done automatically. You just should keep your hands in the steering wheel and then the car switches over. So that, that comes really quite handy and is very relaxing here, especially on US longer motorway rides, which are somehow, um, yeah, you know, not that exciting, going very long in a straight way for a very long time. So, and then these assistance systems are really, really cool. And you now getting up here, just that I can accelerate once once more out there. Um, when you are in these sportier modes, by the way, here confirm, then dynamic mode, there's more happening with the EC, for example. Again, should be not used for public roads and um, especially not when it's wet. When it's dry now, of course, I have a lot of grip, but even here now, um, the car gets a little bit looser in the rear, so when I accelerate it out, Maybe heard that here. This was also in manual shifting mode, so that was also proof. When you are in this absolute manual shifting mode, then it also sticks in the gear and does not shift up. And then you have to sh use the shifting pedals yourself. Just kept it in the first gear that I really had, you know, some spin in the rear. Um, you see, you can do almost everything with this vehicle. You just have to adjust it then to your needs. And you know, pretty interesting rev limiter here as well. Then you can always use, for example, here to go back to the D mode or put it to the right to go back to the manual shifting mode again. So you can and adjust it, you know, as you like. And it's always fun just to, you know, drop yourself back a little bit, reduce the speed, and then once more <laughs> floor it out a little bit. And with the V8, um, it doesn't have to be like the high revving sounds all the time like I did now, it's also just fun to keep it really like, you know, low revving and then enjoying this rather sonorous sound, you know. So again, X6 is a little bit sporter even in this M version and you somehow feel a little bit more connected to the car and the road. Then again, the question is, you know, which focus you are really paying attention to and which one you find more beautiful. And now to our conclusion for today with the new BMW X5M and the sibling, the BMW X6M, as the SUV Coupe version. Well, aggressive styling, yes, 
but it still works. Wheel-wise, of course, you can decide how big you want to have that, especially if you have these optional 22-inch on the rear. But I think, you know, it's still not overly aggressive. On the interior, massive upgrade as for the interior build quality if you compare it to the previous generation. However, only animal skin available here for the seating surface and it's of course not a sporty seating surface, so they should definitely do something else right there. But the build quality on the interior is really superb. Nice natural voice input and so on. Legroom is not the most plentiful you have there in this vehicle, but overall the comfort is still good on the rear bench. Yeah, comfort is also reduced when seating there on these very stiff sport seats. That's the overall scheme of this car. You have less comfort, definitely. Also suspension-wise, it's even stiffer and with this you know, big wheel size too. So you feel a lot what is going on on the road. Maybe you do want that as a true M customer. Then again, most of the time you will not race this car in everyday driving life. You will also use a motorway, cruising and so on. And I think the comfort reduction is a little bit too much in this case. But maybe that's exactly what you want. And that would also be a difference, for example, to the Audi RS Q8. This one really goes in a rather, you know, compromised, less sporty direction. Whereas the Audi RS Q8 is, you know, also very powerful they both have like a very excellent power source definitely but still i found that the audio for example is a little bit more comfortable the gle in this generation we've been driving as the 53 so far that was also a little bit better but compromised but the amg also you know relatively stiff soon also with the 63 driving review as for that so stay tuned for that Overall, I would rather go back to the M50i. That was still a better compromise between sportiness and comfort, and it was already very impressive in the driving. Here, of course, the big difference is you have this overwhelming sound experience, and, you know, it is so crisp to drive, although it is a big SUV, so that was really, really impressive. So hardly ever do we see such sporty performance from such a big car, and that is, of course, something you know, that's still um, you know, giving a lot of emotions. High fuel um, consumption, of course, as I said earlier, minimum of 12 liters, 100 kilometers or 20 mpg, but that's the absolute minimum. It will be way exceeded, I can tell you that, or like lower, of course, from the mpg figures. So if you go for a six-cylinder, for example, like, or like the 40i, you can score some very decent uh, fuel economy figures also with the X5 or the X6. So I would take it for today. I mean, it's, you know, definitely a very emotional car. You know, very expensive. You think like, you know, almost triple the price in the base X5 or X7, um, X5 or X6, sorry. So we have to really think about if that's worth it to you. To me, it's more like, you know, they are showing off what they can do, also driving performance-wise. That's very impressive. But for most everyday driving customers, a 40i will be a very decent choice. And if you want a little bit sportier, the M50i. Or recently now for the X5, the PHEV model is also quite interesting. Here then, when you really want the very sportiest experience together with the sound and the super stiff ride indeed. So what do you think about this episode for today and about this car? Let's discuss it in the comments. And also, which one would you actually go for? Which X5 or X6 version? Tell me and see you next time.